Content warning, this movie fucking sucks. I don't wanna. You can't make me. You're right, I can't. Could you at least try? It'd probably make me feel better about doing this. And the sooner you finish this series, the sooner you can move on to a better Full Moon series. Hmm. Fine. But I want it to be very clear, I don't like this movie. Uh, yeah. It's a movie review show. Saying your opinion is kind of the point. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Evil Bong 420. <sighs> Hello, Internet. I am getting immediately demonetized for this video. Because I can talk about sex and violence all I want, but don't you dare talk about weed on YouTube. Weed is evil. Which I guess is kind of the point of the Evil Bong series. Evil Bong 420 is the fifth movie in the Evil Bong franchise, following up on Ginger Dead Man vs. Evil Bong. And it seems Sara Lee and the Ginger Dead Man are now a permanent part of this series cast. And, well, what else is there to know? It's still written and directed by Charles Band and stars all the same people. Look, I don't want to spend any more time on this movie than I have to. Let's just get into it. I mean, the opening credits are cool and they still got that jam in tune. But trust me when I tell you, this is the highlight of the movie. We open in Bong World, looking distinctly different from every other inconsistent version of it. Although one thing they decided to keep was Ginger's horribly edited, annoying orange mouth. Oh, and boobs. That's pretty consistent. And Ginger's getting tired of his every wish being fulfilled. Also, last we saw of him, he wanted revenge on Sara Lee. I is that still happening? Oh, and he's upset that he can't get a boner? Every time we play, Rabbit always pops a boner. <laughs> hmm, you like that shit, huh? Hell no. Made me jealous. Been a long time since I was able to do that. Listen, I know he got a boner in the third movie, but I don't want that to happen again, so let's just not remind them. Meanwhile, in the real world, Rabbit's opened a topless bowling alley, where he's selling assorted Full Moon merchandise. <laughs> Who would buy this shit? And then, before the place even opens, David Dakota appears as himself, presumably scouting locations for sorority babes at the Slimeball Bowlerama 2. I think they're gay. Really? Well, that one. That's, uh, that's dialogue in this movie, folks. That's just how the whole movie is. It's, it's them saying shit like that, and you just sort of sit there going like, Wait, did they really just say that? Because at some point it all just sort of blows right past you. It does seem to be an accurate look into Dakota's filmmaking. You want to feature my bowling alley in a movie? Well, four or five, depending on how the day goes, actually. But, uh, his cameo in Ginger Dead Man 2 was funnier. And also not something they introduce in the first act and then never reference again. Get on with the plot! You know, if this movie can even be said to have a plot. Also, this is a front for selling weed. Is this even legal? Huh? Oh, poo, oh. Cause this doesn't feel legal. Just don't get caught. And you know, it's a topless bowling alley, and while Darla gets topless, Phoebe refuses to. We talked about this, okay? I really want to be an actress, and although taking your top off can get you ahead, it also devalues you. <laughs> like you had any already. Which kind of raises the question, why was she hired for this job? And I mean that both in and out of universe. Like, obviously, if Rabbit wanted his employees to be topless, there's probably some very specific paperwork you'd have to fill out. 
And if she wasn't going to agree to that, then he could have just not hired her. But more importantly, why was this actress cast in this role? It's a full moon movie. You're not hiring these people for their superior acting ability. If this character was supposed to get topless, hire someone who'd get topless. Either of these girls could have had that role. Also, this actress was topless in the beginning of last movie, so I don't really know what the problem is here. Oh, and then another girl comes in and gets topless. She could have had this role too. You've created a problem where none should exist. And they sure take their sweet time showing off the tits they do have. And like, Full Moon has always stuffed their movies with cheap nudity, but for some reason it feels extra gross in this one. I think part of it is they're not trying to be sexy, they're just doing their job, but the camera insists on showing them in sexy ways. And Rabbit standing there drooling over them doesn't help either. You complain about the nudity, you complain about the lack of nudity, make up your mind, dude. I want good nudity. I have standards. Anyways, Hambo shows up. Ah, the runaway star we all wanted more of. Rabbit agrees to let him sell those same vaguely racist statues he's been hawking in the bowling alley if he emcees the grand opening. And there's an extended sequence of Hambo perving over one of the employees. Trust me, this is a very necessary use of the film's 53-minute runtime. Meanwhile, Ginger Dead Man is still complaining about how he doesn't want to be in Bong World. This is like the fourth scene of this. Just, just get up and do something. Then again, laying around complaining for half the movie is totally in character for him. And then Larnell and Sarah Lee show up because they're hiding from Velicity. Okay, I know it's been a little while since I've talked about one of these. So, uh, Larnell was the main character of the first Evil Bong, and Sarah Lee was the main character of the first Ginger Dead Man. In Ginger Dead Man vs. Evil Bong, the two started dating, but prior to that, Larnell had been with a girl named Velicity. We all up to speed? Okay, moving on. You sure you can handle it? Is Bruce Jenner a confused man? No! There also appears to be a couple having a lovely evening at this topless bowling alley. Now, see, this is who you'd expect to see at a topless bowling alley. Dumbass, racist rednecks. Tell you what, if I'd have known they'd let their type in, I wouldn't have done come. Me neither, tell you what. In fact, I don't want to come in here no more unless they get a handle on this. There goes the damn bowling alley, I tell you. We do get a brief recap on how Rabbit escaped the bong world, but it seems like it wasn't too hard. And he reveals his leaf blower modified to blow weed smoke. Something they also did in Bong of the Living Dead, that much better weed-based indie horror film. I just shit my panties. <laughs> Don't do that to your actors, man. That's just mean. Anyways, Ooga Booga just shows up because it's full moon, so who gives a shit? Let's just throw random characters from other movies into this one. Is this a cinematic universe yet? Although I think I'd rather see whatever he's up to than these chuckle fucks eating up screen time. What does AMP stand for? American Machine and Foundry. They manufacture all of the equipment that's used in bowling alleys today. I thought it was a mucus face. I thought it was assy monkey fart. <laughs> I thought it was a mutant freak. <laughs> we are past the halfway mark and none of the main cast has even interacted with EB. Get to the point! Assuming you have one. Now I'm flying this coop with or without you. No, no, what they got out there that I don't have in here? I want to get laid for real. Dip my breadstick in some marinara. If he leaves, his strength will be at full power. Then I can ensnare him back into my bog world and grow and take over the world. Well, how's... Fuck it, it's a plot. We'll go with it. Better than the racist Chinese character from last movie making a return appearance. But don't worry, Ooga Booga kills one of the racist rednecks because racism is bad. I see no contradictory messaging here. 
And I hope you liked his death because it is the only kill in this horror movie. Oh, and Velicity's here. Sure, introduce more characters. No need to actually do anything with them. I always wondered if it's true. If I pork a real woman, I'll turn into a real man again. What? Why would that be the case? Didn't you already do that in Ginger Dead Man 3? How much are you? How can you have any money if you don't have any pockets? Don't you worry, sugar boobs. I got dough. There's ten minutes of film left. You can do this. You can do this. Good damn- Who told? Who- Who reminded them that Ginger Dead Man had a dick? Ah, uh, you were over the line. Velicity and Sarah get in a cat fight, so Rabbit blasts them with weed. Cause, uh, that's how weed works. They agree to do a bowling match for Larnell's heart, which Larnell points out is a stupid idea, and I gotta say, I agree. But I'ma stay focused on that so I can ignore Ginger's sex scene. EB finally confronts Rabbit, and he puts a garbage bag over her. And then Ginger tries killing Sarah, and that's also easily solved. Get happy! What are you doing? Come on, get happy! Huh? Come on, get happy! But because Rabbit's weed blower is full of EB's magic weed, she takes them all to the bong world. The end. No, I'm not joking. This isn't me trying to get out of reviewing the rest of the movie. It just stops at the 50 minute mark. There's no third act to this movie. That's Evil Bong 420. You see why I didn't want to review this one? It's pervy and honestly just racist, far past the point you could even argue it's just good-natured humor, and it doesn't help that it's not funny at all. But on top of that, it's just unbearably lazy. People look at weird movies and go, whoa, were they high when they wrote this? No, when you write high, you get movies like Evil Bong 420. Unfocused, half-assed, and obnoxiously juvenile. I genuinely respect the stuff Full Moon was doing in the 80s and 90s, and I'll even go to bat for some of their stuff in the aughts. But I have no respect for this era of Full Moon, because it's so goddamn lazy. Filming a movie in a week at one location is one thing, but not writing a full script is another. This movie meanders around aimlessly for about 50 minutes, and then it just stops. This is one of the most insufferable movies I have ever sat through, and I have sat through some genuine shit. This is the absolute low point of the Evil Bong franchise, and possibly of Full Moon as a company. Fuck this movie. Boy, that was a fun, good-natured review, huh? Thank God I've got Metal Ween after this. Anyways, if you like this one, Full Moon Playlist, and, uh... I'm just gonna stop talking, cause why bother finishing a script? I just shit my panties.